called the Chief Welcome Song. This song in hands is to welcome you to the village of Saxon and to the Weaver Clan House. Representing this morning is Johnny Clinton.
Karen and Hugh is called Ganawa. This song and dance is to thank each and every one of you for coming and to wish you a safe journey to wherever you may be going. At this time, we have a special request for a few of you to come up and join us. We'll give you a two to three second dance lesson, an opportunity to wear our regalia, and we'll guarantee all of you a free ride back in town. <laughs> come on up, don't be shy. We've got volunteers from all over the world.
He also has the tail um, kind of in between his uh, paws, and on the tail is a face. That means that that is the strongest part of the beaver. That shows his strength. So those three poles are memorial poles. They're for three brothers that were lost at sea. <laughs> the next okay. pole is a shaman pole. That's an owl at the top and a weasel at the bottom. A shaman pole is usually closer to the water and anybody going by um, in a canoe, if there was someone that was hurt or if they knew where there was a shaman, they could bring him, because he was the doctor, he could uh, hopefully fix them or help them. Uh, the story behind that pole is the Clinket have a, they have a lot of respect for their elders and the women are like very high up. So this gal, she argued with her mother-in-law, which wasn't a very good thing. So the clan kicked her out, the shaman kicked her out of the tribe and she was sent away. Well, the spirit of the shaman turned her into an owl because an owl flies alone and an <coughs> owl has no family. So she was uh, banished from the tribe. This next pole they found, it's called the mystery pole. They don't know anything about it. It's neither Haida nor Clinket. Uh, they don't know any of the stories about it. They really don't know anything about it. So it's a mystery pole. Just gonna stop for a second. You'll notice a lot of the poles have no carving on them. They have a lot of blank spaces. That is uh, Clinket. Haida, they carve from top to bottom. And there's uh, very little of the Shin Chan around. They actually are on um, Annette Island. It's the only reserve in Alaska. Metlakatla um, is the capital. And there's no poles on the island here that are Shin Chan that I know of, except for one when you go and it's in front of the Native Community Center. It represents the Shin Chan. So these poles, and in this area was mostly Clinket. There's a lot more Clinket here in Alaska then. He also was the one that was involved by an Alaska from Russia. Um, he was in the area quite a bit. And the deal is they had mentioned um, a potlatch song. A potlatch is a big party that a chief will hold. It'll last from four days to two weeks. <laughs> they'll dance, they'll do their like stories, they'll feed them, and the chief will give away as well. That's where we got potluck. That's, that's exactly where we got potluck. Potluck, yep. So then, um, in return, the chief expects within two years for somebody to come back and hold a potlatch so that he gets invited and he'll get some of his wealth back. Well, William H. Seward, he was here and he went to many potlatches and he filled up his boat and away he went home with all the riches. So they had put up a pole to commemorate him being here. Well, they waited for a few years and he never came back and never filled up his boat and brought it back up here full. So they painted his nose and his ears red and now it's a ridicule pole. Ah. <laughs> yeah, so he's not too popular. The next pole is a loon on the top. There's three bears. There's a she-bear and then Caps is in the front. Uh, that's a story, if I have time, I'll tell you that one. But the next poll is Abraham Lincoln on the top there. Uh, there, uh, there was two clans in this area and they were fighting and uh, pillaging each other's camps and stuff. And the one clan was a lot stronger than the other. So they kept moving the one weaker clan further and further away. Finally, they ended up on this island and they thought they were safe because they could see if somebody was coming in with their canoes or not. They were out in the open, but they were protected. Well, it just turned out that this island had no food and no water on it. And the uh, stronger clan knew that, so they were just gonna sit them out and wait because they figured they would starve to death. In the meantime, the cutter USS Abraham Lincoln showed up in this area, and one of the messengers came and told us a clan that was stuck on this island about the cutter and said, it'd be a good thing if you guys go and get close to them and they'll protect you. Well, that's what they ended up doing. They ended up going and getting close to uh, 
the cutter and the people from the cutter ended up making a peace treaty. So the two clans are still at peace to this day. So they put up a commemorative pole to commemorate this. Only thing is they couldn't put a cutter on top of the pole because they have to have an animate object, not an inanimate object. Someone on the cutter had a picture of Abraham Lincoln, but it was just from the waist up. And we know how tall and thin he was. <laughs> well, the Clinkett people are very short in stature, so they couldn't figure out how Abraham Lincoln could be so tall from the waist up, so they gave him little short legs to be more their height. <laughs> Um, and this pole that's behind us, you'll have to go down and have a look at the front of it. It's uh, Chief Ebbett's pole. Uh, years ago, there was a trapper up in this area, and his name was Ebbett. He would come and visit the chief all the time. So to show respect, Chief Ebbett and the trapper exchanged names. So the chief got to be Chief Ebbett's, which was the trapper's name. And so we have uh, the Chief Ebbett's pole, and the trapper got the chief's name. On the front of it, you'll notice a wolf, and there is a, supposed to be a copper plate, but the copper plate, they don't put copper <coughs> plates on the poles anymore, but it is carved, and it was carved in uh, 1892. And also, there's a little fellow on the pole in the front there, and he's carved, and he's upside down. That means he owed a debt to Chief Ebbets and never paid that debt, so he got carved upside down. That's right. <laughs> the, uh, as you go down the kind of a roadway, which you're more than welcome to, there's a pole and it has a carving out in the center of it. That would be normally a doorway to a clan house. They wouldn't have regular doors. They would have one entrance door and that would be it. It would be um, half that size because when they, uh, the men would be out in the winter time fishing and hunting and the women would be inside the clan house and they would be um, unprotected. So their protection was the half door. So anybody that came through would have to be down on their hands and knees. And what the women would do was get the stick and bump them on the head wait till the men got back. So that, you would not, you'd have to crawl through on your hands and knees to get into a clan house in the winter time. There's a couple, another pole down a little further and it's a tired wolf. It's a wolf with his tongue hanging out and I'll tell you that story on the way into town. I think we can go into the carving center so you're more than welcome to